What does the convention mean that you are a victim? Because that's a label. You're given a label, you have to be a victim. In sociological terms, in psychological terms, you may or may not be a victim. So you may be also a victim. But you need to be a victim in the sense of the convention for the court, so that the court can accept who you are. Um, the court could do two things. It could rely on the notion of victim as this is done in different states or in different jurisdictions. Or the court, and this is essentially what the court does, is to say the victim is a word of the convention, an autonomous concept of the convention. We interpret, we understand in the convention a victim in a particular way. We are essentially free in the way we interpret the convention to decide what is a victim and when we grant uh, when we grant victim status. Um, what if the person is a person you are a victim when you are directly affected by uh, human rights violation? You are a victim when you are being ill-treated on a police station, no question about that. How direct does the direct victim status have to be? When can you claim to be the victim of a human rights violation? How much damage do you have to suffer? In the strictest sense, it would have to demonstrate that this has really brought you not only the significant disadvantage of your community requirement, but effectively a damage that you have suffered physically, mentally, or in your in your life in different ways. Um, if Argentina introduces very strict uh, surveillance methodologies for uh, postal services and telecommunications social networks, and you know that this is the case, but uh, you don't use social networks that much because you think it's all rubbish, or a trend, or a way Are you a victim? Are you the victim by uh, surveillance mechanisms that are being instituted for everyone? And there's two ways. One is to say, no, you're not because you have not suffered any damage. Or the other is to say, but I could use social media. And if I do, I will be a victim. In all likelihood, I will use social media. But the court has gone a long way. It has said victim status can actually apply in such situations. Uh, to us versus Germany, already 1978, uh, by introducing such surveillance measures. And the court had all you have to do is that you have to prove is that in some likelihood, you may actually be using uh, um, these telecommunication methodologies, and that means you are already a potential victim in the sense of the of the court. So there's a certain foreseeability that you that you have to prove. Um, the court said similar things in, in a case in Ireland, Open Door uh, versus versus Ireland. This was a, a case of an abortion issue, um, and uh, the issue was that the Irish government prohibited, it was 1992, prohibited information on abortion abortion clinics and facilities and so on. Uh, and the question was who is affected, who is the victim in that sense? And at the end the court concluded that the victim of the withholding of information on abortion is every Irish woman of childbearing age. Because potentially every woman could be affected by the fact that she hasn't got information on abortion that should have been provided uh, under the convention uh, as, as uh, access to information and, uh, and uh, on, on health issues. So that is potentially a rather far-reaching idea of being a victim, and the court follows its approach in being flexible and effective in providing a remedy that is uh, that is real. Uh, the court even went in some occasions a step further, so there is no direct chance of you being a victim at all. Uh, it's a case against Austria, originated in 2001, as Scott L. versus Austria, which was about homosexual relationships. And there is, was, a law that prohibits um, relationships of homosexual natures between minors, 14 to 18, with adults, which could lead to criminal prosecution. But the criminal prosecution would only be for the adult part in that, not for the minor. And uh, in, in one homosexual relationship, the minor, under 18, complained, legal guardian, um, and the court accepted that even that could be a victim status the person who would never be directly affected by a conviction of the courts by criminal offense would suffer damage uh, because in that relationship uh, that would have an effect on his personal life that would qualify as a violation of the convention for somebody who has a very indirect victim status. So the court is prepared actually to go quite a long way um, to, to uh, accept victim status, even indirect victim status. The boundaries and the limits of the court are where, first of all, all of this is 
field of mere risk or suspicion, so there has to be a certain likelihood that this could really affect you if you were to take acts that you can reasonably be expected. So reasonableness is an issue. And the other limit is that the court never wants to have uh, complaints in obstructive, that is, complaints that will relate to specific human rights violations or to speak with the legal term, actual popularis, that is, complaints that are being uh, brought by one person, by one lawyer, on behalf of other persons against the abstract existence of, of, of a norm. So you can never claim that a norm is wrong in the abstract, as long as the norm doesn't affect you or is likely to affect. So the court, by all means, wants to wants to avoid that, which is which means for the court that is not impossible, but that is not that is not acceptable. In France, 2001, Jehovah's Witnesses, a religious community in France, claimed to be violated in their religious rights because there was a governmental committee that drew up a very critical report on religious sects and included Jehovah's Witnesses and suggested that there should be much more stringent laws against such types of religious communities. And the court said there is no likelihood and there is no reasonable expectation that uh, such parliamentary report that is not made into the legislative stage could be seen as in all likelihood affecting the human rights of the members of that, of that particular religious community. The court would have wanted to wait until there is some proper law or some legislative measures, but not just the mere indication that in parliament the issue is being discussed and discussed as being critical or problematic. Um, the same originated in a quite interesting case in many purposes. Switzerland, 2011. Mundili um, was the name of the case, but it's called the case of the Minaret. Uh, it was the uh, problematic Swiss legislation that would prohibit the building of minarets um, on different grounds. Long discussion in the in Swiss public on the role of the Muslim community in Switzerland which led to a uh, decision by, by, uh, by a public referendum and a very problematic decision was being taken that uh, the building of minarets would be produced under Swiss law um, and uh, of course the complaint was that is a restriction of freedom of religion and exercising one's religion and again the court was in principle uh, uh, in principle accepted this could be the case, but said that at this particular stage where there is a complainant neither has the intention to build a minaret himself, nor has demonstrated that he would need or has needed a minaret to fulfill his religious needs, qualifies to make him a victim of the convention. This is much more problematic uh, than the other cases, um, because that report of course says something which is rather suspicious and likelihood itself of what that particular person would need in terms of fulfilling his religious needs and how that would have been one other elements as well in that case, but that is sort of the central point. Um, so you can be direct, direct victim, you can be indirect victim, and you can also lose your victim status. You usually lose your victim status the moment the state has provided the appropriate remedy. So any time during the proceeding, your problem is solved, you cannot continue to claim being a victim. Even if perhaps in the abstract sense the law or the problem may persist, but if you are no longer affected, if your remedy has been provided, you have been installed into the situation as it were before the complaint has been done, uh, the court would claim that victim status ceases or victim status has been, uh, has been lost. Um, as long as that is complete, there was a case, a, a Spanish case, where uh, a, a judge was. Um, being kicked out of the court for particular behavior and that the European court found that it was not acceptable under the convention because of the breach of the fair trial. Uh, and uh, the court, the, the government accepted this and uh, provided the appropriate remedy, but there was still a fine to be paid, a very small fine to be paid in civil proceedings in that particular case by the applicant. And the court said that is not good enough. We need complete restitution as the case, as the situation was before. So the, case, the, court, the, the, the state has to provide complete reparation uh, and complete remedy, which also tells you already something which we'll talk about in a moment, that is what kind of remedy will the court provide when it comes to judgment. The general approach seems to be you should be as you were before the violation occurred. So the state's obligation to put you in a position uh, as 
uh, as it were before. And something which is quite interesting is not in the convention, but which has developed through case law, is that you can bring cases on behalf of other people. The convention itself doesn't talk about, even if you talk about the right to life, it doesn't talk about the right of the uh, family members of the deceased to bring uh, claims. This has been clarified in the court judgment that this is possible to quite this extent. Uh, so that in cases where either persons have deceased or have been killed uh, by state agents, uh, their close relatives uh, would be able to bring a case. The same is in the case of people being in detention. Uh, we've seen cases of mentally handicapped persons, um, children, minors, etc. So there is, interestingly enough, in the case and not in the convention, the convention in its procedural part seems to have ignored this problem. But in the jurisprudence of the court, there is a clear case that uh, you can bring these cases on behalf of others and you can bring it again as an autonomous victim concept it is in disregard of what the national law would say on your status you don't have to be the heir in national law to bring a claim for the issues or whatever of your deceased father you need to be close in one way or the other you need to demonstrate to the court that uh, there is uh, a damage done to the direct victim that can be brought by an associate person to the direct victim that has a certain claim in that case, which are usually children and, and guardians, etc., but which can also be other people that are close. That's again, a lot of work. Even more than that, you can even claim to be the indirect victim of a violation of a direct victim. That is, if your husband has disease because of torture or murder of, uh, in the hands of the state, uh, you, would, you could at least try to claim uh, a, a remedy as, as uh, the widow. For the, for the damage that you have suffered yourself as an indirect victim. So the, the way in which the... Convention? <laughs> so the way in which the... You want some music? Um, the way in which the convention deals with, with the victim status is, is an anonymous one, and it's one that uh, uh, allows the, the court to... Within rather broad limits allows the court to be an effective remedy for a person that claims to be a victim of human rights violation. That is quite interesting again because the victim status of a person uh, is an issue that comes up in all human rights systems and before all human rights bodies. When is it that you can claim to be really a victim of the human rights violation and how far is the procedure able to go? But while the court, as you see, is, for example, extremely strict and formal when it comes to the six-month rule or the four-month rule, uh, the court is very broad here when it comes to the effects that the convention will have on you uh, in, in effective terms, um, provided that has not been remedied by the, uh, by the state or, already. Uh, I've briefly mentioned the Chagos Islanders case already in terms of jurisdiction, where Pacific Island of Diego Garcia, um, the, the, the persons there were deported from the island by UK authorities a long time ago. Uh, and that case was settled financially by the UK authorities at some point uh, and accepted by the, the uh, Chagos Islanders community. But in a different context, later on, the case was brought to the convention. And the court said, again, in, the, in that case, in a rather strict formal reading, to say, your, your case has been settled. We're not going, re we're not going to reopen cases that, uh, that have been formally settled. Despite the claims that that settlement was old, was done under different circumstances, uh, was not done in, in the appropriate way, etc., etc. So that's a thing that cannot be passed on from generation to generation. The court is also pragmatic in a way. To say it has been settled. And end of story. So uh, accepting settlements is, of course, an issue then that becomes directly linked to the question of victim status, because by accepting a settlement, you give up the victim status. So there is also a certain strategy from this point of view of the applicant to consider how and when to be a victim and how to present the case in terms of making sure that the court will be able to accept that there is actually a victim status of you as a person. Which brings us to the question, should there be a lawyer or should there not be a lawyer? Uh, well, at least you should be smart enough to make sure that you uh, complain and that you make it clear that the court that you are uh, a victim. Uh, that includes, as a matter of principle, also associations, because that's what the convention says. <coughs> With two important caveats. One is if it's an association that brings cases on behalf of others, the code is rather strict and says the victim status must be a direct victim status in the sense that the association must be affected, not its members. So, uh, homosexual initiatives, for example, that would bring cases against 
prohibited flow uh, against their members who can qualify as a victim as long as they as an association are not affected and they're working. They cannot bring claims against their victims, claims against their victim. Because the court wants to avoid actually popularis as much as it can. It's not a court that wants to look at laws in abstract. It needs the context of the position. The business companies can do that as long as it makes sense, which means particularly property rights expropriation are susceptible. If beyond that, the court has been very careful to treat business companies as if they were to have a claim under an individual human rights treaty. And often even associating their claim with the claim of their staff or their directors or whatever. So the court is very cautious. Um, but that's not the end of the story. There is still interesting jurisprudence and literature and discussion out there of if businesses can have their human rights violated to start with. Convention in principle provides it because it says associations of different forms uh, where people come together are capable of being a victim. But where the boundaries of this are is another issue. Uh, companies haven't that much right to use the European court, there's not much of an interest to in them. Um, but again, that would be a matter of comparison. The other human rights systems would be more susceptible or less susceptible to treating business companies and corporations as capable of having victim status and human rights. Uh, you know, right. <coughs> the victim status in an individual case is quite clear, but let me say a few words about interstate applications, because that's a bit of a different story. We have, we're have we just talking about individual applications mainly, but what is the victim status in an interstate application? How is the state 